Pregnancy and Human Development The main terms for this chapter is gestation period, which means to carry, and this begins from the latest menstrual period until ready to give birth, a zygote, which is a fertilized egg, pre-embryo, which is an embryo from the first 14 days after fertilization before implantation. Embryo is fertilization through week 8, and a fetus is from week 9 through birth. Fertilization is when the sperm's chromosomes combine with the egg to form a zygote. The oocyte membranes block the cortical reaction during monospermy. This ensures that only one sperm gets in, while the first sperm gets in and the calcium diffuses in the oocyte. Capacitation is a 2-10 to 10 hour process. The motility must be enhanced and their membranes must become fragile. A necrosmal reaction is the release of necrosmal enzyme. The penetration of the egg is the sperm's membrane binding to the oocyte to allow the sperm's contents to enter. Cleavage is the period of rapid division of the zygote. It has rapid division without growing. During fertilization, the male expels millions of sperm and most of them don't reach the oocyte. The sperm has to reach the ovulate secondary oocyte. For a sperm to enter the oocyte, they use ocosmal enzymes to bind to it. This also blocks from polyspermy to ensure that only one sperm enters. This also ensures that only two copies of chromosomes enter. The completion of meiosis II is when the sperm contents enter the oocyte and loose their plasma membrane, and the male's pronucleus forms when the nucleus grows to become five times its size. Then the oocyte triggers the cortical reaction to prevent polyspermy, and then the calcium levels in the oocyte and zinc ions were removed. This then completes meiosis II. During implantation, blastocyst searches for the right environment for the endometrium. This begins at day six. Trophoblasts will bind to the endometrium when the endometrium secretes digestive enzymes and growth factor. Trophoblasts undergo mitosis in two layers, cytotrophoblasts, which forms the innermost layer, and syncytiotrophoblasts, that forms the outermost layer. Blastocysts go under the endometrium and the cells divide to seal over it. Trophoblasts secrete HCG, which stimulates the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum bypasses the usual pituitary ovarian controls. This prompts the corpus luteum to control secreting estrogen and progesterone. Adjustment of neonate and extrauterine life. The APGAR score gives each observation given to a score of 0 to 2, and its total APGAR score is 8 to 10, which means very healthy. There are five signs of the baby's physical status its heart rate, its respiratory effort, muscle tone, reflex irritability, and color. These are measured at 1 minute and 5 minutes after birth. During the baby's first breath, Carbon dioxide is not being removed by the mom after birth. CO2 builds up in the blood and this excites the respiratory control in the baby's brain to take in its first breath with a lot of effort. After fully inflating the lungs, the surface tension decreases and it becomes easier for the baby to breathe. Embryonic development begins with the process of placentation. Placentation is the formation of the placenta forming chorion and chorionic villi. These cells from the original embryoblast give rise to a layer of extra embryonic mesoderm that lines the inner surface of the trifoblast, with the villi making contact with the maternal blood. The embryonic tissue, material tissue, and lacuna forms during placentation. The functions of the placenta are the transfer of nutrients, gas exchange, and transfer of metabolic waste. The embryonic membranes that form are the amnion, which develops when cells of the epiblast. The functions of the placenta are the transfer of nutrients, gas exchange, and the transfer of metabolic waste. The embryonic membranes that form are the amnions, which develop when cells of the epiblast turns themselves into a membranous sac. The yolk sac forms when cells... Wait. 
The yolk sac forms from cells of the primitive gut and arranges into a sac. And the allantosis forms as a small outer packeting of the embryonic tissue. Another process that takes place would be gastrulation, which is the formation of the germ layer consisting of three different layers. The ectoderm, which are cells that remain on the embryo's surface. The endoderm, which are the first cells to enter. And the mesoderm, which are the cells being pushed laterally at the surfaces forming a layer. The process of organogenesis begins is the formation of body organs and body systems. Neurulation begins first by forming the neural plate, then the neural groove, neural fold, neural tube, then brain and spinal cord. Slowly forming the body cavities, muscles of the limbs and cells that form the heart and blood vessels. Throughout the nine months, the length from crown to rump get to be 14 inches. The pregnant mom. As pregnancy continues, the mom experiences a few changes. The mom experiences anatomical changes, metabolic changes, and physiological changes. Some anatomical changes is that the uterus starts filling most of the pelvic cavity by 16 weeks. Then, as pregnancy continues, it reaches the level of the sternum's schifoid process and occupies most of the abdominal cavity. The female reproductive organs become increasingly vascular and engorged with blood. Some metabolic changes is weight gain, which results from fetal and placental growth, the increase of size of the maternal reproductive organs, and greater blood volume. The mom utilizes more fatty acids, which spares glucose for use by the fetus. The mom's blood calcium level also increases due to a rise of plasma levels in vitamin D, which increase absorption in dietary of dietary calcium. This ensures the fetus will have adequate calcium to mineralize its bones. Some physiological changes is the growing fetus will suppress the bladder, so urination becomes more frequent or even uncontrollable. Birth consists of all of four stages. Starting with labor, there's peaking levels of estrogen, which triggers the labor. The fetus then begins secreting oxytocin, which then simulates uterine contraction, which then simulates placenta to release prostaglandin, which then promotes uterine contraction and cervical ripening. The baby's presence in the pelvis stimulates mechanoreceptors in the cervix, which stimulates the hypothalamus to release oxytocin. This starts a positive feedback loop with CRH or corticotropin releasing hormones. Corticotropin releasing hormones causes ACTH and cortisol levels to rise, which promotes maturation of the fetus's lungs. Now, true labor contractions will occur. The first stage of labor is the dilation stage, which dilates the cervix from 0 to 10 centimeters. This is about the longest stage, about 6 to 12 hours. This stage begins with onset of regular contractions that cause progressive cervical dilation and enfacement. Contractions are about 15 to 30 minutes apart, and they last around 10 to 30 seconds. The amniotic sac ruptures, releasing amniotic fluid, or what we would call water breaking. The cervix is now fully effecated and dilated once the infant's head is forced against the cervix. There are three subphases within stage one, the latent, active, and transition phase. During the latent phase, contractions increase 
strength and frequency. The active phase is when the infant's head enters the pelvis. And the transition phase is when the baby's head rotates, allowing it to navigate the narrow dimensions of the pelvis. The second stage is the expulsive stage or delivery of baby. It begins with complete dilation of the cervix. Contractions are stronger, occurring every two minutes and last about a minute. With crowning, there's two different positions, the vertex position or the breech position. The vertex position is head first when the head acts as a wedge to dilate the cervix. This also allows the baby to breathe and be free of mucus. The breech position is butt first, which makes delivery very difficult and often requires forceps or C-section. Stage two ends with delivery of the newborn. The baby's neck extends as the head exits from the perineum and the body follows after. Stage three is the delivery of the placenta. The placenta and its attached fetal membranes is also called the afterbirth, which is the placenta is usually released 30 minutes after. The placenta is shed from the uterine wall and it must have two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein. Absence of an artery can mean cardiovascular disorders. The last stage is recovery and bonding. Lactation is the production of the milk by the hormone prepared mammary glands. Lactation is stimulated by an increase in estrogen, progesterone, and lactogen from the placenta near the end of pregnancy. This then stimulates the hypothalamus and tells the hypothalamus to release prolactin releasing hormone, which is usually two to three days following the birth. Your breast then starts to make milk. A yellowish fluid called colostrum has less lactose in milk and almost no fat, but it contains more protein, vitamin A, and minerals than the milk. This is also produced by the breast, and they help protect the infant's digestive tract against infection. After the placenta is gone, prolactin levels start to drop, so mechanical stimulation of nipples by suckling send extra potentials to the hypothalamus to release PRH. This results in a burst-like release of prolactin, which then stimulates milk production. The actual ejection of milk is called the letdown reflex, which is released from the alveoli of the mammary glands. Suckling stimulates the breast, which prompts the hypothalamus to release oxytocin from the post posterior pituitary gland via positive feedback mechanisms. Both breasts will always eject milk. Even though one is being suckled, both of them will be leaking while lactation.